I make art about female beauty. In particular, the sheer splendid gorgeousness contained in images of Western fashion and art produced since the Renaissance. Depicting feminine loveliness is out of style today, although it has had a long and honorable history in art. And my focus on Western beauty is a narrow slice given all the different kinds of beauty around the world, but it's a preoccupation that is deeply personal. My artistic pursuit of gorgeousness began very early. I was passionately devoted to this image and I drew it hundreds of times, full of longing and intensity, as if through the repetition I might become her. Life magazine came into our house once a week when I got a little older, bringing sophisticated aesthetic sensibilities full of fashion, artists, personalities, and attitudes. I pored over every photo and story, imagining myself in this glamorous reality. As an adult, 12 years of researching and writing histories of beauty and consumer products companies like Max Factor, Butterick Patterns, Kinney Shoe, Timex Watch, Buxton Wallets, trained me in the disciplines of American business history and fashion history. I've been teaching fashion and art now for 15 years. It's been a total immersion in five centuries of the sheerest elegance as I've looked at thousands of images to prepare my classes, a kind of dream state of aesthetic contemplation that has borne rich creative fruit. For one thing, it's inspired me to create hats and so directly participate myself in this historical parade of fashionable femininity. Lots of my hats are directly inspired by vintage looks, and as time has gone by, I've used my own person more and more as an expressive vehicle, a highly constructed artistic creation that I put out to the world, including an exploration of head wraps, elaborate party costumes, and my current Edwardian hairdo. Two years ago, I published Style for All, a history of fashion that I wrote and illustrated for my students returning to the creative process of drawing over and over images of loveliness as I work my way through five centuries of fashion. It's an easy sideways move to a diva's dozen where I look closely at the great female singers of the past. These performers of extraordinary talent and charisma were among the most famous women of their time. Diva means goddess and refers to the divine sounds that they made. While I can't reproduce the sound of their voices, I can celebrate the sheer dazzle of the extraordinary likenesses that they've left behind, portraits captured by the greatest artists and photographers. These women, adored by thousands, stood at the very pinnacle of opera, then the queen of all the arts. In my studio, at my desk, I use all kinds of media, pen and ink, gouache, color aid papers and magazines for collage, markers, crayons, oil pastels. In some cases, I've made large poster size collages. I start with a large scale sketch to get a feel for the image, and then I take a big blank piece of paper and start putting down small bits of colored paper and build up from there. I photograph the collage and then lay it out on the computer with text and titles. Some divas are so glorious that I try to preserve much of their essence. I use layers of transparent media to build up a new image, faithful to the original, but now my own. I designed the cards as an homage to the collectible diva postcards of the turn of the 20th century which had her photograph and name in a particular role, sometimes with her autograph and a bar of her music. On the back, I've written a brief life story, each one astonishing. A Diva's Dozen represents my current place in a lifetime of passionate attachment and contemplation of ideas and images of beauty, fashion, art, and history, all summed up and made manifest in 13 five by seven cards. I hope this introduction, making art about beauty, helps to explain the genesis and creation of a diva's dozen 
and inspires you to learn more about these wonderful women.